Um, hello, ladies. Um, it's been so good to see some of you out at church as church has opened up a little bit more and there's been more freedom to come out. And I hope and pray that um, the restrictions continue to be lifted so that more of you feel comfortable to come out and we can see each other again. Um, today we're going to be in Isaiah 40, verses 28 through 31. And before I begin, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day and um, I thank you, Lord, for even the hiccups that come along in our day because you help us through them. Lord, thank you for loving us and for caring about us. Be with me today. Help for me to only say the things that you would want me to say and help it to be a blessing and an encouragement to the ladies who are listening. We thank you and we love you again for how much you care for us and how much you love us and how you died on the cross to save us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so in Isaiah uh, 40, 28, it says, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Have any of you ever been weary? And I'm not just talking about tired, but a weariness of spirit or mind or, um, or body, maybe all three at the same time, where you go to bed at night and you're, you don't get any um, true rest in the fact that you're actually going to sleep because the next day you have to get up and do the same things over and over and over again and there, there just doesn't seem to be any end in sight where the mundane has gotten you discouraged. Maybe it's a situation that has you mentally tired thinking about maybe you're trying to help somebody and maybe you've taken on some of their problems and that has make, made you mentally tired or mentally weary. Um, the fact is is that we will get weary. I know that's not a very encouraging thought, but if you've ever been weary, um, you know that fact. And if you haven't, you will be at one point in time. It says right here in verse 30, even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. Think about the college student who we think of them as a youth. You know, they have their whole lives ahead of them. And yet many of them work almost full time. They go to school full time. They come home from work and they have to study and they fall into bed at maybe 12 o'clock at night and they have to get up for an eight o'clock class the next day. That's wearying. And um, it says here that even those youth, so weariness, it doesn't matter your age. The promise is, such an encouraging one, is that we will get weary. And it's really part of our human nature. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, it became weariness just came along with it, sorrow and labor of days. Um, but if you look up in verse 28, it says, hast thou not known? I like that, hast thou not known? I mean, come on, here he is, the God. He's supposed to be the God that you know. He's your savior. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. So the fact is that we're all gonna get weary at some point in time. But the second, the second fact, that's actually an encouraging fact, not a discouraging one, is that we have an everlasting God and we have a creator that never faints, that never gets weary, that never, um, that knows all and understands all. And he knows us personally and he knows the path that we have to take. And he knew that we were going to get weary and he knew what situations were going to create our weariness and that we can rest in that God because he doesn't faint and he doesn't get weary. What a great promise, what a great fact, isn't it? But then he also says that he'll give us power. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increases strength. And so in the midst of your weariness, what should you do? But well, let's look to the everlasting God. Let's look to the creator who doesn't faint who knows the path in front of us, who gives us power when we need it to keep moving. In verse 31, it says, and this is the most famous verse in the passage, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. <clears throat> Several years ago, I was helping my parents clean some things out, and I found a poster that had been in my grandfather's office, and it was of an eagle, and the picture had it positioned where the eagle was up in this very, very high tree, and its nest was there, and it could see all around. And when we think of an eagle, we think of a very powerful, that picture was very powerful to me when I saw it, and it had some notes that my grandfather had taken actually from this passage um, about an eagle. But when we think of an eagle, we think of a very powerful bird that soars above the difficult air currents and soars above and can see a bigger picture. And the fact is, is that as Christians, the Lord wants to help us soar like that. He wants to help us through those difficult and weary times. And he wants us to help, he wants to help us see our, the bigger picture, if you want to say. God can, he knows the purpose that he has us here. He knows why he has us here. He knows um, his will for our life. And sometimes we have to be reminded that even in the mundane, he has a will for us. He has a purpose for us. And when he allows us to soar as eagles and get over those difficult air currents, he helps us and reminds us of his purpose for our life. But then it says, they shall run and not be weary. So when we wait on the Lord during those times of weariness, we can soar like an eagle, which is a pretty powerful word picture. But then it says, they shall run and not be weary. Um, I have a, a few friends who are runners, and they say that sometimes during a run, you get to the point where you hit this wall and you don't feel like you can keep going. But if you can just get that second win, you can finish the run, <clears throat> however long it might be. And, and the fact here is that if we wait on the Lord, He wants to help us get that second wind to get us through that weary wall. Um, because the Christian life is likened to us running a race. We all have our separate and individual races to run. And because weariness is a part of our fallen nature, it's during those times that we need to look to the Lord and ask Him to get us through that weariness and give us that second wind to keep going. They shall walk and not faint. That's another great encouraging fact that if when we get weary, and it's not if, but when we get weary, that he, if we wait on the Lord, He'll renew our strength, He'll help us mount up with wings as eagles, and he'll, he'll help us run and not be weary, and walk and not faint. Hebrews 12, 3 says, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Again, that passage reminds us that in our minds we will get weary. A lot of times that's where the battle happens. Satan likes to get us discouraged. Satan likes us to get defeated. He likes us to be weary because when we're weary, all we're doing is looking at ourselves and we're looking at our problems and we're looking at the immediate things that are causing that weariness. But it's during those times that we have to realize that God, that we have to consider Him, that He loves us, that Jesus uh, wants to give us power, our Savior, um, endured. It says, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Let's consider all that our Savior has done for us. And, um, and it says, that, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Psalm 27, 14 says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Again, there it is. What do you do when you're weary? which will happen. It says, wait on the Lord and He will strengthen your heart. He will strengthen your mind. <clears throat> Galatians 6, 9 says, and let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Um, it's just a season of life. Weariness is a season of life and the Lord will help us um, move past it. I like to walk the path that's around the church and there are some times that I'm so concentrated on the path in front of me, um, not wanting to trip over a branch or making sure I don't trip over my own two feet or an animal that might come scampering across the path, that sometimes I don't look at the beauty that's all around me and the blessings of the creation that's all around me. And it's really pretty on that path. If you've never walked that path, I encourage you to do so. 
sometimes the sun comes through the trees just in the right way and it's really beautiful. But when I'm concentrated just on what's in front of me, I don't see all that beauty. And when we get into a very weary spot in our lives, the best thing for us to do is stop and look to Jesus and wait on Him and allow the blessings of the everyday, because there are blessings in the mundane, to encourage us and strengthen us. Um, and the Lord wants to do that. Remember, He is the everlasting God. He is the Creator. He doesn't faint, and He's not weary. There's no searching of His understanding. He knows us. He knows where we are, and He doesn't want us to stay discouraged. He wants us to live a victorious life. Um, my husband preached a message on Wednesday, and the title was just Victory, and that's what God wants us to live in. And so if you are in a weary time, or if you've ever been in a weary time, or you're going to be in a weary time at some point in time in your life, um, just remember that the everlasting God wants you to consider Him, to wait on Him, and He will give you the strength to make it through those weary times.